hello there. I'm Scotty. You're not. And, uh, yeah, I'm sitting down for this one. Uh, we're going to talk about Twilight Zone, the movie, uh, which came out in 1983. And I've seen this once before, and so I'm watching it again for the second time. And, uh, the first time I watched this, I was very confused. I was ready for the da 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 you know, all that stuff. But what do we start out with? Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. That's what we start out with. I was, I was like, first time I watched it, I was like, really? This is what we're starting out with? So, what this movie is, is basically retelling, sort of, four Twilight Zone episodes being retold through four different directors. That being, uh, John Landis, Steven Spielberg, Joe Dante, and George Miller. And uh, John Landis directs this opening and the first segment. Uh, three of them are actually, you know, retellings of uh, Twilight Zone episodes, while the first one is sort of a based on, where they took their own idea and changed it up a little bit, and that's kind of my least favorite one, but we'll get to it, and it has a lot of controversy, too, with that one, but we get the opening here, Dan Aykroyd and Albert Brooks uh, driving down the highway, listening to Creedence Clearwater Revival, the night special, and then the cassette player eats the tape, which, yeah, been there. Even with videotape, uh, so now they're forced. They're forced to kind of do their own thing, and so they do this. Um, hey, guess what? Uh, we'll, we'll do a guessing game. Uh, we'll hum a TV show theme song, and if you get right, then you get to guess one. You know, so the first one gets three wins or whatever. Uh, so they start doing that, and then. After a while, they just transition to talking, and they start talking about Twilight Zone episodes, back and forth. And then uh, Dan Aykroyd is like, hey, you want to see something really scary? Yeah, yeah, what? You gotta pull over, though. It's really scary. You gotta pull over, though. Pulls over to the side of the road. He goes, are you ready? What's your really scary? Really scary. Turns around. Are you ready? I'm ready again. He turns into a hideous monster. Dan Aykroyd does. I'm pretty sure it was Dan Aykroyd in the makeup, but yeah, that's how that ends. And it attacks the guy, attacks Albert Brooks. So yeah, it's a decent kind of opening with a twist, this Twilight Zone like. And then we get our first uh, segment here of four. It stars Vic Morrow, the late Vic Morrow, rest in peace. We'll talk about that as this racist guy who is joins his friends at a bar <clears throat> and is all pissed off because the Jewish man, his Jewish co-worker, got the promotion that he wanted. And he outright just like heavily leans into the fact that this guy was a Jew and then just starts, you know, he calls him disparaging remarks. He calls him the Jewish slur that uh, starts with a K, which I won't say. And then he says the N-word. A few times, which invokes the wrath of Stephen Williams, Grant and Duke, or but um, and this was directed by John Landis, so having Stephen Williams in this makes sense. And uh, so you know, he's like, you know, I'm out of here, I'll do this, and he leaves. And when he walks out, he's back in 1940s occupied France with the Nazis barreling down on him. And so he's trying to escape, but they think he's Jewish, they view him as a Jewish man. Eventually, he escapes, and now he's in Vietnam, being chased by... No, that's later. Now he's in the South, and he's an African-American, and he's being attacked by the Ku Klux Klan. A little on the nose there. And then he's in Vietnam, being chased down. And this is where the controversy comes from. Because during the filming of this scene, actor Vic Morrow and two child actors were killed in an accident involving a helicopter. 
that caused a lot of problems, but they still released the movie, but it's, it's terrible to hear. But, yeah, the guy ends up, like, he can see his friends, but he's trapped in the Twilight Zone. Uh, I will note that the narrator in this, replacing Rod Serling for the narration throughout the film, is Burgess Meredith, who starred in a couple of Twilight Zone episodes, including uh, uh, The Absolute Man and uh, Time Enough at Last. Uh, so he narrates this, and it's kind of cool to hear the narration. You know. And they, they did bring back some other Twilight Zone ones, but... Uh, segment two, directed by uh, Steven Spielberg, and it's so whimsical you can tell it was directed by Steven Spielberg, is Kick the Can, starring uh, Scatman Carruthers from The Shining, as this guy who goes to this old folks' home, and it's it's a little hokey, he goes to the old folks' home, he's talking to these old folks, but hey, what did you want to be when you were young? What were you doing? And oh, I was playing. I was dancing. I was a swashbuckler. And I did this. This one guy, Mr. A.G. is like, oh, grow up. You're old. Can't do any of that stuff anymore. Blah, 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 blah. And so he's like, I'm like well, what did you do, Mr. Whatever his name is? And to Skatman Carruthers, he's like, well, I was playing Kick the Can. And so that night, they all go out and they play Kick the Can. And as they're playing, they all turn into kids. Little kids running around. And then it's one of those moral things. Like, oh, you know, we're kids, but we don't want to have to go through all the things you do when you're a kid again. And you think, we want to be adults, you know, but you'd rather be... They're like, I saw Haley Comet when I was when I was a girl. I said I was going to see it again when I was 80. Oh, well, what do you want to see it when you're 8 or when you're 80? 80. And so he takes him back into the house, and Mr. A.G. is looking up. What are these kids doing in here? And he tells the nurses, and they're all turned back, except for this is not Mr. Ag. Mr. Ag is the swashbuckler guy. He turns, you know, he wants to stay a kid, and, and then this old man's like, "But I, I want to go too." You can't come with me. Like he can't turn into a young kid. I, I don't know. But yeah, and then it ends implying that Scatman Carruthers is going to another old folks home where he's going to do the same thing. Helping old folks recapture their youth, but making them realize that it's, you know, it's good to go back once in a while, keep it youthful, you know, be youthful inside rather than on the outside. So it's a nice little thing. It's very Spielberg, very whimsical. The music is very Spielberg. Yeah. Segment uh, three is uh, a retelling of It's a Good Life, where a woman, she's on a trip. Uh, she stops at this diner, where we get a cameo from Bill Mooney, who was uh, in the original uh, episode. This was based on. He was the little kid, Anthony, and his, I think it's Anthony now. It's Anthony in this one. Uh, and at the bar is Dick Miller. So can you guess who directed this? That's right, Joe Dante uh, directed this. Dick Miller in a cameo as the bartender guy. At the diner, working at the diner, and this kid's there, and he keeps hitting this thing, and the TV keeps going in and out, and it, it's implied later that he was doing it on purpose, making the TV go in and out, for what we find out he can do, but as he goes to leave, and I'm sorry, this made me laugh my ass off, <laughs> kids, I know the kid ends up, you know, the kid did this on purpose, so he'd take this woman home, but this woman steps in, you know, and defends the kid, and so she goes to leave, and she backs up right into this kid. Bends his bike, he knocked out. It's not funny. It's it's funny. It's not funny. It's funny, but it made me laugh. And it's done on purpose. You know, the kid did it on purpose. And so they can you take give me a ride home? Yes, but when he gets there, we get the cameo uh, from the original actor from uh, the. Uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers from the original 1950s version. A young Nancy Cartwright. Uh, and this is just, basically, this kid is forcing them to uh, do what he wants. To eat the kind of foods that he wants. I thought, oh, these wants cheeseburgers every day. But no, it's like peanut butter on a burger. 
I don't know about that. I don't know if kids ever eat that. They eat weird things, but like ice cream cones and stuff. And I don't know. It's really weird. Uh, I don't think whoever wrote this knew actually what kids like to eat. I don't know. The thing is, oh, all junk food, no vegetables, all that stuff. It's like, eh, you know. And like, I, lo I love how like she goes to take. He goes to take her upstairs, and we see there's another. That's my other sister. Like everyone's going through this lady's bag and smoking her cigarettes and doing all this stuff that adults can do, and then comes down and he's he's felt he's all mad, and then basically they sell out Nancy Cartwright and she gets like they do this thing with this bunny. The effects in this are very Gremlins esque, where they get this bunny and. They have the body snatchers guy go in there and do a trick, pulls out a bunny, and then he turns it to this giant monstrosity, and then he creates this. He puts uh, Nancy Cartwright in the TV, and she gets basically killed in the TV, and then he creates this cartoon monster thing that comes out of the TV, fighting this woman's like, enough! You need discipline, you don't need this. And so he says, I don't need anything, and makes everything but him and her, him and her disappear. And I thought they were gonna lean in more to the sister upstairs, I guess I remembered it wrong that he did. She had no lips, nothing. And then it just ends with um, him making the car appear again and driving off. So I don't, I don't know. Kind of a eh ending, to be honest, but it's all right. But we get the final one, and it's a recreation of probably the most famous Twilight Zone episode of Terror at 50,000 Feet. Famously starring William Shatner, where he said the line, There's something on the wing. This one is directed by George Miller and stars John Lithgow in the role that Shatner originally played in. You know the whole shtick. He's on a plane. He's a nervous flyer. I would be too. I have never been on a plane. I never plan on getting on a plane. Unless it's some kind of an emergency, you won't get me on a plane. I'm, I'm saying right now. I have a fear of heights and planes. Whew, that's, psh, no. I'll never get on a plane. No, sir. But he's on a plane, he's very nervous, and of course, he sees something on the wing, he tries to tell people they don't believe him, and he, you know, he's freaking out, they try to tell him, hey, you have to calm down, but he said, there's something on the wing, it's tearing thing apart, there's lightning and it struck, and he saw the monster, like, it's supposed to be like a gargoyle, I don't know what it is here, tearing up one of the engines, he's like, well, the engines went out, he's like, yeah, but we can fly on the other three engines. But, like, they never asked the question, how did he know one of the engines went out? They don't ask him that. It's just, yeah, they think he's crazy. Right. Whole thing. Eventually, they land, and they're carting him off to the nut house because he's crazy. Something on the wing, something on the wing, something's doing stuff. And then we get, like, the reveal that something did happen because people go to, you know, we got to check out the engine, and it's all torn up, and they go, what the hell happened back here? Like, they just think the lightning struck it. Something else happened. Also, very weird, there's like this little girl, like when he's at the beginning, when he's like taking his medicine, trying to, he's in the bathroom and stuff, trying to just calm himself, they do shit, they do, your rock has, extinguish your cigarettes, which smoking on a plane, that's <laughs> something far gone from now, uh, but he starts to smoke later, and the little girl has a puppet, he's like, no smoking, no smoking, the captain said no smoking, I guess. They land, like I said, they say, what the hell happened here? And he's carted away to the nut house, because I think he's crazy, but actually they should have waited a few minutes, because, you know, there's no way the lightning could have done that, but they take him away. And as he's being driven away in this ambulance, you hear the driver, which is very clearly Dan Aykroyd again, if you know his voice. Oh, guess you had a scary flight, huh? He's like, how about, how about some music? And so, of course, he turns his gun, and it's... Let the midnight special shine a light on me. He's like, oh, I love Credence that John Lithgow does. And he's like, so I heard you had a scary flight. Want to see something really scary? And then the movie ends on that. Dun, 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 dun. But I like this. You get a dun, 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 dun. And you get the actual narration from the TV show by Rod Serling. It's a great tribute. And then it ends the movie. And I was expecting that 
to the Twilight Zone. The song would play. It came out in 1982. This is 1983. But no, we don't hear it. We hear this generic kind of score that plays over the credits. But this was fun. Uh, I'll give it a middle of the road. Because like the last two, I liked. The first two wasn't... The, first, the last two segments I like, and then the first two actual segments I didn't really care for. The opening I like a lot, but it's just, it's a middle of the road for me. It just doesn't, it's not badly done. It's just, like, the Spielberg thing feels like it doesn't fit in the Twilight. Like, the Twilight Zone wasn't always about horror, but you feel if you're going to do something, like, horror-related, the first two don't really, you know, if you're going to, like, you have two at the end are, like, the, Fly, the terror at 50,000 feet, completely horror. Uh, it's a good life. With what they did with it, it's horror. So you could have figured out some other ones to do. Like, what about uh, Eye of the Beholder or Time Enough Last? Like, better ones you could have pulled from. Uh, you know, even The Obsolete Man you could have done. I don't know. You could have done some other ones that were better than this, but... As it was, it was fine. It's the middle of the road. But yeah, and then the next movie I'm checking out is also an anthology film. Quote, unquote, based on a TV show. Uh, not really. It's basically the Creepshow 3. I'll explain it when I get to it. But it's Tales from the Dark Side of the movie. But uh, this was Twilight Zone, the movie. And it's the middle of the road. So... What are your thoughts on Twilight Zone, the movie? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm Scotty. I'll see you in the next one.